Production funding for Sports Files is made possible in part by... Infinity of Memphis has moved to Germantown Road just half mile north of Wolf Chase Galleria and is proud to support WKNO for its quality broadcasting and service to our community. Quality and service? No wonder Infinity of Memphis feels at home on WKNO. The WKNO Production Fund, the WKNO Endowment Fund, and by viewers like you. Thank you. Today on Sports Files, I'll be joined by the head football coach of the Ole Miss Rebels, Hugh Freeze, and will meet Melinda Meacham, better known to many as the Grizzlies' bongo lady. So here we go again. As you are likely aware, the first airing of Sports Files each week takes place on Thursday night. Meanwhile, we normally tape the show on Wednesday afternoon. With that said, once again, the Grizzlies played a huge game Wednesday night, so we have no earthly idea what took place. Hopefully, the Grizzlies defeated the Trailblazers in Game 5 of their playoff series, which would give them a 4-1 series win, advancing them to a Western Conference semifinal round showdown versus the top-seeded Golden State Warriors. Now, if the Grizz lost, then it's back to Portland for Game 6. Okay, one thing we can definitely be sure of is that guard Mike Conley didn't play, and his status for the rest of the postseason is still up in the air. The Grizzlies' starting point guard was injured in Game 3 after colliding with the Blazers' C.J. McCollum. The result was a facial fracture near his left eye and subsequent surgery this past Monday. Now, aside from the injury to Mike, things have gone pretty darn well for the Grizzlies and their fans, and that includes one of their most loyal and beloved fans, Melinda Meacham. Wait, you're saying you don't know who Melinda is? Well, I have one word for you. Bongos. Yes, Melinda is the famous Grizzlies bongo lady, and she joins me next on Sports Files. Melinda, thank you so much for coming in. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Is this crazy or what? It is wild. It is very crazy. Everybody around this area knows you from the bongo cam at the Grizzlies games, but now the country knows you after what has happened over the course of the last few weeks. The article that Scott Casciola wrote in the New York Times and then Good Morning America in New York City. It's been a whirlwind for you, hasn't it? It has. It has. It's almost surreal. It's hard to believe that it all happened. All right, let's go back to the Grizzlies arriving here. You weren't initially a big fan of the Grizzlies or really of pro basketball, were you? Right. I, I've never been really much of a sports fan. Um, and then my son came along. Well, we had gotten some tickets. I went to see him like once at the Pyramid and then um, maybe once at the Forum. And then my son, he just was born that way and he loved it and he got me into it. And then once you go to several games, it's like I just became obsessed. I loved it. It's contagious, right? It is very contagious. Once you started to go to a few games with mm -hmm. your son and then sometimes your daughter, uh -huh. did you decide then and there you were going to buy season tickets and become a season ticket holder? I did. I did. And how many years ago was that? I want to say it was like eight years ago. So it's been a while. Yeah. But the bongo right. lady thing has only taken off in the last three years, correct? Right, right. So there are plenty of games that you were there just mm -hmm. minding your own business, right. watching basketball. Exactly. So this bongo cam and Jason Potter's creation, I'm sure, all of a sudden explodes. One game, it's there, and the camera goes on you. Is that what happened? Well, yes. It was... Um... It, it came on and I just thought, it, it, what a different kind of cam. You know, you have the kiss cam and the dance cam. And, and, um, and so I was like, well, this is just funny. And I'm sitting in my seat and I just kind of start doing this. And I think I, one of the cameramen picked it up and my son just starts shrinking, just trying to move away <laughs> from me. And as he did that, they caught it and it just went. And then of course I had to just take off and, and make him even more embarrassed. Are you naturally outgoing? Um, yes, I would say I'm naturally outgoing. Okay, so your son's there, he's embarrassed, mm -hmm. it's not an act, he really is, and then again, we're both parents, we know about kids being embarrassed about <laughs> their parents. So, the crowd gets into it. Mm -hmm. Did you think anything of it when you did it the first time? No, I just thought it was funny. Um, went and told my friends about it, and we just laughed, and my son was horrified, and all of his friends were texting him at the game, and um, he was mad at me for a while after that, a couple of days. Yeah, he was just 
because I embarrassed him so badly um, in front of all of his friends. And so, um, but I had no idea it was going to take off. And, and so some people would see me and go, that was hilarious. And I go, yeah. But it was before Twitter really went crazy. So, I mean, now, boom, right. hey, did you see that? And even just three years ago, four years ago, whatever the case may be, it's a lot different than now with, right. with, with Twitter and the word would be out in a second. So it happens the one time. Mm -hmm. The next time it comes on, do they, they look for you or is it just a coincidence again that you pop on? I, I think it was just a coincidence. I think, you know, they just, they know the regulars that are there. Um, I think it was Rex was the dancing guy, if you remember, right? right. right? Um, and so it, it's kind of, they knew the regulars and it, it happened again. And so, and my son just happened to be with me again. I mean, he was, he was the one that was at that game. So it starts to take off. It does. You're getting into it. Mm -hmm. You're not embarrassed by it. Mm -hmm. Your son is, but now he's starting to have fun because he comes to a game with a paper bag over his head. He did. He came up with that. That was in the playoffs. And he, he was just like, he knew it was going to be Bongo Cam at some point. So he kept that bag with him so he could just put it over his head. Your daughter subsequently will come to a game once in a while with Morocco's while you're on, <laughs> on your the bongos. bongos. Yes. Yes, she's hilarious. She's like me. So he's the one that's more reserved and quiet, and she's just kind of crazy like her mom. All right, let, let's talk about, first of all, a, a special gift from the Grizzlies. Talk about these bongos here. Um, so this was last year um, during um, one of Tony Allen's, he does the karaoke fundraiser right. um, at the Croc Center. And I, I went and um, they presented me, the Grizzlies had gotten that and Tony had signed them and it says, um, to Bongo Lady, much love. Um, and he presented those to me at the Croc Center. And so it was awesome. I got my picture made with him and um, it, he, was, he was so nice. He was just so nice, nice gave me a big hug. And it, It's funny when the Bongo Cam comes on, you could look at Tony or some of the other players and they'll look, they'll watch, and they're watching, you know they're watching for you. They are. Um, I, at the Grizz Gala, not, you know, they didn't have it this year, but the last year, um, it was so sweet. Mark Gasol came and got me and took me and introduced me to his wife because I was there and it was the crazy bongo lady and she was just so, just, they're just so nice. That's what I love about this team and the fans. It's just down-to-earth people. I mean, those guys are, they all relate. I mean, they relate to us. They're, they're, just, they're just so nice. They just, you know, they'll talk to you, and, and then the fans are great. Everybody's great. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about the fans because now you'll see there's some that are trying to get your crown, I think, Melinda. They're, they're going crazy on the bongo, too. There's only one bongo lady. But how have they reacted to you know, sort of this, this quasi-stardom from you? Um, I think for the most part, everybody's been really supportive. There's some people out there that it annoys, I know, but, um, it, you know, you've got Me Tweet, she's one of my favorite, Lord Dunlow, and then Fletch, and, and all those people are always tweeting, and they're very supportive, uh, Katie Forbes. Um, and, and so now it's funny, though, because I have had a few pop up and told me they're challenging me, that they're going to, <laughs> they're going to take away my crown. So, and Brevin did a really good job, you know, that Brevin one bongo, yes, on that one bongo cam, they got Brevin on there. So. Absolutely. Uh, All right, you have another prop with you, and this oh, is terrific. This mm -hmm. is the Grizz Bongo Lady jersey that your son yes, bought for you, right? Yes, my son bought it for Christmas. I told him I'd love, I just kind of mentioned, I said, you know, hey, I need my own jersey. And, um, and so... He, he actually bought it, and 39 is the joke because that's when I turned 39, I said I would never go past that number, so that's my number, so that I'm 39 forever. Yeah, yeah 39 forever. That's, that's a it. good thing. That's it. Okay, so let's talk about this whirlwind the last few weeks. First of all, did Scott Casciola contact you, and then when did you find out that the New York Times was doing a story on the bongo lady? Well, okay, so my ticket rep, Preston, who's an awesome guy too, he, uh, he called me and said, hey, the New York Times wants your number. And I was like, what? <laughs> and uh, he goes, is it okay if I give it out to him? I said, well, sure. So then um, Scott contacted me. He was here in town um, and said he'd like to talk to me. And so we went and met um, before the game and my son was with me and we just, we talked and I got the impression when he was talking to me that he was doing an article on the Grizzlies. And he said something about when he was talking to Tony Allen, Tony Allen said, Bongo Lady is my home girl. And so he thought that was so funny and he wanted to know what, you know, what all this was going on. And so he did, we talked, nicest guy. Um, and, and then a week later he said, I'm gonna be sending a photographer. 
to follow you around. And sure enough, this um, photographer followed me from the time I got to the game until after the game was over to the parking garage. And so I was just really um, it, 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 he, flattered. I mean, I was beyond flattered. And so then um, Scott called me and asked me a few more questions, clarifications. He said, I'm going to run the story. And I said, okay. And then it was on the front page of the New York Times sports section. I had no idea. Obviously, people saw that, read that. It's the New York Times, for goodness sakes. Good Morning America contacts you. <laughs> Before we get to the GMA, have other publications or productions, shows contacted you? How, how, how many people are interested in the bongo lady? Well, um, the Ellen DeGeneres show reached out, um, but they didn't really know if they wanted me on there. It's real funny because you have to promise an exclusive. So with Good Morning America, um, I had to promise them an exclusive, but there have been several, several places that have reached out. And then the funny thing, if you go on the internet, like health.com, they do an article about the cardio benefit of air bongo playing and bongo lady. I've never <laughs> spoken to them. And so I'm laughing because I'm one of the most unhealthy people you could ever meet. Um, oh, so, no, no, no. <laughs> so anyway, um, so there, just a few, few have reached out and um, then it took off on the internet. So. All right, so, so GMA, Mm -hmm. They fly you to New York City. They fly, yes. Your son, your daughter, yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. Um, well, so they called my mother and woke her up at like 6.30 in the morning, my 79-year-old my mother, wanting to know where I was, saying they were Good Morning America and how to get in touch with me. My number's non-pub, obviously. So what happened after she hung up? Did they, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she was like, who is this? So she wouldn't give them my information. Right. So she, like, she got called me. Anyway, so I call him, and he couldn't decide if they, the producer, super nice guy, if they could, if they were going to send a team here or send me there. And at 2.09 in the afternoon, he asked me if I could catch the 4.30 flight to New York City. And I was like, well, no, my kids are in school. And so he said, well, I've got you a flight for 6.30. So we basically get, when I got off work and the kids got out of school, we had 30 minutes to pack to get to the airport. So we fly there, we have a connecting flight. We get there at one in the morning, we haven't even eaten supper. So we're in New York City, Times Square, at one in the morning, and um, go get something to eat. And then we have to be, we meet them in the lobby at seven. They walk us right across the street. And it's just, it all, they had hair and makeup. Um, and it was just, I mean, it just all happened so fast. Did you fast. feel like a star? I did. I did. I just, um, I just can't believe it happened, even looking back now. Were they, so. and, and you were telling me earlier that they were really nice people. They were really yes. happy to see you and, and very cordial. Yes, they were very, very nice. Like, so Lara um, Spencer was the one that pretty much did my little part. But then um, Robin Roberts came over. Mm. We talked about Lawrence, her, her nephew that played for the Grizzlies, who also played for Mississippi Lawrence State. Lawrence Roberts, right? Yes, where I went. And then um, George Steph Stephanopoulos was so nice. I mean, they were just everybody involved in that whole that whole place. They were just so nice. Can we get you anything? Do you need water? Do you need this? Do you need that? But my condition of going there was that I got back in time for the playoff game, right? So so we had to turn right around and, and fly back. Um, so we didn't get to spend much time it outside was quick. of that. It was, it was very, quick. Less than 24 hours. Let me ask you this. Do you know the night of a game that they're going to do the bongo cam? Sometimes I do, but this season, um, this season I have not. And, and the reason why I only have two seats, we only have two seats because I have two teenagers, only two of us can typically go at any given time. Right. So, um, so sometimes they would let me know, but this season I haven't really known at all. And then until, of course, after the GMAs, um, Jason Potter tweeted me and told me I had work to do when I got there that night. Yeah, they don't, they don't want to take a chance. You could be using the facilities, getting something to eat, and the bongo can comes on. Where's bongo, lady? It'll be a big disappointment. How long can you can you roll with this bongo lady thing? I don't know. I know. I, I don't know. I always say I think I may be in the third quarter of my 15 minutes of fame, but uh, <laughs> but we'll see. But I've I've really I've really enjoyed it. It's been an honor to represent the fans. There's so many great fans out there, and so I'm just I'm just one of many great. You, you fans. have a permanent smile on your face. I know you're having a great time with this. All right, as we tape, mm -hmm. so the folks out there know we tape the show. Tonight, the Grizzlies are playing game five, trying to put away Portland. Unfortunately, it didn't happen in game four as they went for the sweep. I would imagine, though, you feel pretty confident they can get it done tonight? I do. I do. I feel like I, I'm always a little scared to jinx this, but I just, 
I feel like we've had this series, um, and I hate we didn't get it done in game four, but I feel like we're going to get it done in game five. You think Bongo Cam will make an appearance and the Bongo Lady will make an appearance tonight? I, I don't know. So they just had it. So we'll see what those those guys always have something good. Jason Potter and, and uh, Memphis King Joey, they have, and Grizz, uh, they just have something wonderful all the time. For those who don't know you or haven't read your story, what's pretty amazing is you're a judge, a part-time judge, and a full-time attorney. Right. Okay? Right. So you're, so you, you don't work for, like, the clown shop over here, okay? <laughs> you are uh, somebody that is revered, looked up to. Mm -hmm. Talk, I mean, Talk about that, how right. different that is. Come on. It was, it was really nice because at first it was a lot of anonymity. Nobody knew who I was. Mm -hmm. I was just bongo lady in Memphis, and then I'd go back to my day job. And and um, and so now people know, but it, it's it's... It's great, like the Grizzlies, get, it, those, that's where I let myself go. My job is a very serious right. job. Right. Um, and sometimes very sad, I deal in, in, in some really sad things. I'm a domestic attorney. And, and then I do, I sit in domestic court um, oh, wow. as a part-time judge. So this, judge. Is your, this is your getaway? That's my getaway. Yeah, it would be kind of strange though if you're in the middle of a ruling and hey, bongo lady. Exactly. Has so, that ever happened? It has not happened yet, knock on wood. So I'm hoping that it won't happen, but I, it's just such a different different context. And sometimes I'm sure people will get to know me, but down that way, not everybody knows who Bongo Lady is. And it seems like you don't mind that instead of Melinda, a lot of times it is just Bongo Lady. Hi, that's Bongo right. Lady. Yes, that's it. Yes, I don't mind it at all. Hey, Melinda, let's uh, wrap up our interview like we do with every interview. It's called Five for the Road. I'm going to give you uh, five simple questions. First thing that comes to mind. Okay. First one's a little tricky, though, because we asked for your favorite professional sports team. You're not a huge sports fan, but I can't let you say the Grizzlies. It's too easy. So oh, who geez. else? Um, professional mm -hmm. sports team. Um, okay. Well, I'm just going to say uh, Green Bay. Green Bay Packers. Mm -hmm. Okay. How about your favorite pro athlete? My favorite pro athlete would have to be Tony Allen. Would be T.A. Your favorite music or band or genre, what do you like to listen to? Um, I listen to rap music primarily, believe it or not. Old school rap. So. Old school rap. Yes. So give me a rapper you like to listen to. Um, well, uh, gosh, all the way back to Houdini days. I mean, I like wow. Houdini. And, um, and I also kind of DJ on the side, uh, too. So that's kind of a do fun you? thing I do. I do. How about that? You yeah. learn a little bit uh, every time we do Five for the Road. And, of course, you like any type of bongo music, I would imagine. Uh, yes. Um, Ricky Ricardo. Big fan of Ricky Ricardo. Yeah. <laughs> uh, favorite movie of all time? Uh, Grease. What is it? Grease. Grease? Yes, stuck with me. I know that's kind of crazy, but when I was eight years old, I saw it 13 times. Still love it. All right. <laughs> and then uh, favorite television show? Um, oh, gosh, that's hard. Um, Breaking Bad. Breaking Would, Bad. Yeah, I can go back and rewatch it. I still love that show. That's Belinda, awesome. the bongo lady, thank yes. you so much. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure having you on the program. Hopefully we see you tonight. I know we're going to see you here in the not too distant future with the Warrior Series. No. Because we, we know the Grizzlies are moving on. We are moving and on. And we'll see you in action. Thank yes. you so much. Thank you. We'll take a short break. Overtime is coming up next. From bongos to bonkers, and last fall, the Ole Miss Rebels took college football by storm, stunning Alabama in one of the Rebels' biggest wins in years. The national sports media became engulfed in what was happening in the Magnolia State between Ole Miss and Mississippi State. The two rivals were winning and moving up the rankings. But things changed for the Rebels with one heartbreaking, stomach-turning play at the goal line versus Auburn at Vaught-Hemingway Stadium. The Rebels would lose that game, would get rolled in Arkansas, and then bounce back to win the Egg Bowl over the rivals from Starkville before getting blasted by TCU in the Peach Bowl. Now, despite the poor finish, head coach Hugh Freeze knows his team showed a lot last season, and he's confident it will continue, as he told me recently when we met up in South Haven. Well, Hugh, great to see you again. This is, this is the meet and greet time of the season, right? You go out and, and talk to your fans, and it's a fun time for you guys. It is. It's uh, good to see you also, Greg, as always. And, uh... It's been great getting out to be with our fans. I mean, it's a, it's a long week, 
It, uh, you know, you feel a bit out of touch with what's going on back at the office, but uh, but there's no question the, the few hours that we spend at these places with uh, our great fans is, is very important and enjoyable. What was your evaluation from what you saw from your team in the spring? Uh, I'm confident. I, I think uh, there's reason to be uh, very optimistic that we should be uh, very competitive in the Southeastern Conference with the chance to to be relevant and who decides uh, who wins the SEC West. Uh, we got a lot of quality kids returning. Uh, obviously can't control injuries and, and the way the ball bounces sometimes. And in this league, everyone's so good that um, you can be very good and, and not win all the games. So it's, uh, it's going to be a great challenge, but we're, we're optimistic and excited about uh, getting into summer work and heading into fall camp. As you said, a lot of terrific returnees, but uh, one position where you have a new starting player, and that's at the quarterback position with Bo gone. Chad Kelly's in, he's new. Buchanan, Kincaid, all battling in the spring. Where do we stand? You know, I said after spring, I felt like Ryan had a, a slight edge heading into the offseason. Um, that's based upon the 15 days, the totality of, right. of, of what happened there. But uh, the lead is so minute. And um, it's probably a bit unfair for me to even say that now. Chad really only had, you know, four weeks in our system because we can't coach him before spring ball. And uh, I love what I saw from his IQ, football IQ. And um, But uh, it's going to go well in the fall camp, maybe even into the season. But I, I do think uh, that uh, even in this off time, part of the way that they lead in the off season, decision making uh, with, with everything, uh, we'll play roles into it. So I think the competitive stuff is going to make them all better, though. Hugh, how big of a step up was it for you last year? You've had a lot of success since you got to Oxford. But last year, the fact that you beat Alabama, you won some huge games, and really re was on the national stage for the most part last season. Well, that's what my message is to our, our fans right now is, you know, we um, – a bit surprising to a lot of people mm -hmm. last year that in the 10th game with really under a minute left uh, against Auburn, we're third in the nation and we win that game. You know, you stay third at least in two games that uh, you feel like are winnable left. Um, everyone knows what happened at the end of that game and how disappointing that was that we lost. And we certainly weren't the same uh, the rest of the year, I don't think, from that. But, uh, you know, our goal is to make that a new normal and, and not to be so surprised that we're in those discussions. Um, but uh, it's going to take a lot of work and, and consistency to, to be there. But um, last year was a, a really fun ride. I mean, we had some disappointing times, but, man, there were some really high times too. I was able to see a, a number of games at home, the big win over Alabama. It was crazy on the field with the mad rush from the, fa from the fans. I, I don't want to bring up the negative, but I do want to ask you, Laquan, where is he right now with his rehabilitation? All I can do is uh, put great trust in our medical staff. And, uh, but when he, Laramie, Aaron Moore, some of those guys that are critical that also have a future in football. Uh, we put a plan in place where our doctors check it every week, a new x-ray, a new, and, um, you know, they're very confident that, uh, that everything looks great and he's going to make full recovery. And uh, I didn't let him go any in spring, but he did routes versus air and all of those things. And he's hungry and, and very determined to come back, and I see no reason why he won't at this point. You talked about after that tough loss, it was tough the rest of the way, but you did bounce back, and you did what you needed to do, and you got yeah. that egg bowl again, yeah. and you got the trophy, and you get to uh, present it tonight and show it around on this tour. That's a big thing for you guys. Uh, that makes life uh, a bit sweeter <laughs> in, in this state for sure. And, you know, I, I think uh, probably the only thing after the disappointment of Auburn and then the, at Arkansas that uh, would have motivated us to, to rise back up and play the way we, we could and that we had most of the year was probably the rivalry game. And unfortunately, we, we made some plays in that game and, uh, and were able to win that, which is a huge, huge win. All right, 2015 schedule, as you know, at Auburn, at Alabama, at Florida. You go to Starkville for the Egg Bowl. You got some big ones at home with LSU, Arkansas, Texas A&M. How's the schedule present itself to you? You know, I, I'm not a big guy that looks at whether it's home or away, and I see all the people that um, make, make a, a lot about that. I, every place you play in this league is difficult, whether you have to go to A&M or you have to go to Auburn or, or Alabama or Florida or or they come to you, you. Know, or they come to us. It's going to be difficult. You'd love to have them all at home, but reality <laughs> is you're, you're going to have four on the road and four at home, and uh, you're going to have to play, uh, you know, 
a little extra better on the road for sure to, to fight all the things you fight on the road in this conference. But I don't really look at that. I just look at one game at a time and it doesn't really factor into me in my mind to where it is. Have a great spring, a great summer. Catch all those bass out there. Good luck with fishing, and we'll talk to you in the fall. Thanks, Greg. Good to see you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Have a good time. Always good to catch up with Coach Freeze. Well, it's official. The long-awaited, much-anticipated, and often delayed Bass Pro Shop Pyramid is officially open. Last night was the star-studded grand opening of the mega retail store that has something for everyone. And next week, we'll take you to the gala and show you some of the finished product while hearing from some of the dignitaries who were on hand. Now, from the NFL Draft to the Kentucky Derby to the Mayweather-Pac-Man fight, this promises to be a fantastic sports weekend. So enjoy it. And remember to catch any of our previous shows, simply head to our website, WKNO.org. Have a great week. And we'll see you next time. Production funding for Sports Files is made possible in part by... Infinity of Memphis has moved to Germantown Road just half mile north of Wolf Chase Galleria and is proud to support WKNO for its quality broadcasting and service to our community. Quality and service? No wonder Infinity of Memphis feels at home on WKNO.